I'm going to go to media. And in the media, so what I want to do, we're going to ultimately add a background to this. But bear with me. We're going to go to this tab first. So the media tab has um, all media. And we got all kinds of stuff there. We got favorites. If you make a favorite, we've got online media. And these are things that you can find from YouTube, Vimeo. I got they got Pixabay as a default, Unsplash as a default. So all these are web searches. Okay. So all you would need for YouTube, for example, is the share link for that YouTube video. If you click on that and click on add, it's going to ask you for the video name that you want to make it, and then you would paste in that share link. Okay. If you go to Vimeo, you can do the same thing. You click add, put the name of the video you want it to be in terms of for your viewing, and then you paste in that link, the share link, and it'll pop up there as well. Uh, Pixabay is a little bit different. Pixabay actually allows you to just find pictures and you can do a search, right? So I can say, let's do a search for the cross. And that's on the far right there. And it pops up all the options and pictures that it found for the cross. And you can select one of those. So let's say I want this to be on the slide you'll see it show up on the slide. And that was straight from Pixabay. I never have seen that picture, used that picture before, but let's say, you know what? I like this one better. I can click on this one and do the same thing. All right, so that's a way that you can get a background. All right, um, and if you right click on these, it gives you an option to edit them and you can go in and I, I want it to be a little bit darker. I can go into the filters over here. I want it to be a little bit more blurry. So I'm gonna turn up the blur and I'm gonna turn uh, let's see here. Brightness. I'm going to turn that down to where it's not as bright. I'll turn the blur to where it's a little bit easier to see. And that's a way that you can get a quick image of your particular or for your particular show by going into the media. And I just went to Pixabay. You can also do the same thing for Unsplash. Okay. Cross is still being the search option. And I say, okay, I like the red cross. Okay. So let's pick the red cross and it shows up there. All right. And I can just click on any of these images. This is all searching from the Internet. So you got to have an Internet uh, connection for any of these to work because they're going to be streaming it straight from the Internet and pulling it into your your particular show. All right. So that's a really cool way to get some quick backgrounds. All right. Now, that's online. The other option you have are screens going back into our media tab. So it shows you one screen and then it shows you another screen. I've got two screens on mine. And then also you can break out windows. You can also do NDI and you can actually have the a lot of programs make it very difficult for you to go and show your screen or show a window uh, if you want to show something in real time. Uh, and typically that happens. I know for me, when with, with uh, media ministry teams I've been on, we're usually trying to show a video from YouTube or something like that. And we would have to go out and show the, share the screen and turn off the presentation and so forth and so on. Well, free show makes it easy and they just allow you to copy that link and share it. And you will have the YouTube video from your online settings if you go to YouTube. And so um, I'll take off the cross. I've got a chosen trailer and I've got a what am I called to do video. I can simply just click on those and they'll start to play in the background there. OK, and I can take off the slide pick, uh, image here and I can just see the video. It defaults to be in the background, right? And so I can pause it by going back down here and just clicking on it and it goes away. But that's the way that you would insert videos in free show. So you really don't need to go outside to another screen or anything like that, like you see here for the screen options. Um, I wouldn't recommend it uh, because you really won't need to, all right? So I've got screens there, uh, windows I've got here. These are all the different windows on my computer and then NDI, those are there. Now, earlier, it didn't show any windows because I did a search for the cross, okay? And that actually will allow you to search across any of these things that you have. So online, we were doing the search, but that carried over to screens and so forth. But if I wanted to go to screens and I wanted to record the screen, I can right-click and start recording this particular screen as well from this program. That's more of an advanced feature, not something you need as a beginner, but it's something that's pretty cool to know. The other thing that's pretty cool about this, the screens is the NDI. So in another video, we talked about the settings uh, and the outputs. You can output your free show slides or presentation through NDI. So it sends it out through the NDI network or network device interface. So any device or computer that you have that has a way to pick up or read the NDI signal, this program can send it out. 
but it doesn't just send it out. It actually has an option to be one to receive an NDI signal as well. All right. So you can actually use this program to read NDI signals on the network and you can see them listed here if there were some and you can select those to be an input to your show. All right. Very robust, not something that a beginner would need to know or need to use, but it's very good to know that you have it because it does leave room for a lot of expansion wirelessly. OK, because that's a wireless network or wired network, but it's all in the network. So you can literally have screens from other rooms in the in the church being shared if you wanted to and have someone in the back end making changes or doing things or whatever it is. And you can show that through this NDI option on the screens options. All right. And then cameras. Um, you can actually show cameras, all right? So you can see my camera here. This is my cell phone camera, right? It's showing up here, and it automatically connects. It's on the same network and everything else. Um, and then my FaceTime camera for my my laptop is right there, all right? And so you can see your different cameras using FreeShow, which is very cool. A lot of programs don't do that, like OpenLP. No room to put live cameras in, but I can put this in as a background, uh, on my show and then I can have the lyrics over the top of it if I want to I would change the color of the lyrics and stuff like that but you can automatically do that you can pick a different camera so I might say you know what I want to have a roaming camera be the background so you might have someone on the team going around and um, showing the audience worshiping or something like that they can have an iPhone and do that uh, from free show real time which is really cool all right so we're still in media. We saw all. We saw favorites. We saw online, which gives you access to the YouTube, Vimeo, Pixabay, and Unsplash. Uh, and then the screens, very cool as well. And then the cameras, very, very unique feature here uh, with the cameras where it shows you your FaceTime camera if you have one. You can hook up other cameras uh, from uh, a USB connection. Uh, you need a uh, uh, interface card or whatnot to make sure those cameras will be visible here because they're going to be read by the computer but you can make any video become your background in free show which i love all right and then you have this option to add folders so i got so these are all icons here online screens cameras the rest of these icons are all folders that i've added myself all right so these are all folders on my computer that I wanted to search in. So you can actually add new folders. And so I've got wallpaper photos. Uh, so if I click on this, it'll show you all my wallpaper photos that I might want to use. These are really high quality photos, so I don't typically use them because the, the files are large, like multiple megs in terms of like 20 or 30 megs. Uh, but I've also got this one called YOLO box files. And it actually is a folder on my computer that I have. And I've got backdrops in here that I can use. And let's say I wanted to make this be my backdrop here. And it'll automatically put that as my backdrop. Okay. I've got some uh, backdrops that are kind of like a thematic for, uh, we got like wood, we got a blurred out, you know, background here. Um, all those kind of things you can set up. I got all these off of Canva, so you can do the same thing yourself. I like grunge backgrounds, so I've got some some grunge backgrounds that I've used and like to use from time to time. Now, the weird thing is this whole setup for the lyrics and stuff like that, it's really not even showing up as white. The lyrics are showing up as gray. So if I go through, let's say, uh, to edit and see the text color here, it's showing up as if they are the gray. So if I make them white, that'll make them a whole lot easier to see. Uh, and I can go through each of these and I can just make the lyrics white. And that'll make it a lot easier for every slide to be seen. Uh, and I can go through here and do that. OK. And so. I'm going to go in and make these white. And this is what you could do real time. So I'm just showing it to you. Uh, if I go in and I say select all, I can right, I can do select all, command A on my computer, and I can do white. And that changes all of them. Okay, so if you want to do it quick, because there's a lot of slides for this particular song, you can do that. Uh, and I just did it that way. All right. And so now all the songs are white. They're not showing up here. If you saw the video about this section, all you got to do is hit this update and you'll see now all my lyrics are going to show up white and it's refreshed. All right. So going back down to our media, we started all this by talking about these backgrounds uh, that I've got saved on my computer. OK, they're just files that I've saved in a folder. I've downloaded them off of Canva. You can download them from your favorite background uh, place that you like, but you can pick any background you want uh, and it'll become your background. You see it here in my preview output. 
Okay, uh, right there. And so that's a really cool feature that I love about this program, how easy it is to select your own background and then have it displayed up real time. And it's really quick, easy and responsive. Uh, you can do videos if you wanted to. Um, I've got more files here that have some video backdrops. So you can actually play video backdrops if you want to. So this is a bright orange one and it'll be a moving backdrop. Very easy to do. Downloaded it off of Canva, which is your best friend in, in, in media ministry, at least. And so you can do that. Uh, this one's another motion background. It's got like a little, I don't know, it looks like a little toothpaste strip to me, but a colorful blue and red strip or whatnot that's showing. Uh, but you want to have some kind of subtle background. You can do that with this program very easily, and it'll show up for your audience to see. And it's very professional, very clean. Uh, and then down here, when we're looking at all these different options, you can go down here. You can actually uh, navigate and see folders or files, okay? And I've got it set to where it shows everything. And if I go back, let's see, let's go back here. And so it shows you the folders. I've got, so right here, this is the folders, images, and videos. You can just narrow it down and just say, I want to see folders, or I just want to see images, or I just want to see videos, okay? And then you can cycle through this, the grid view, and it shows you the list view. Uh, if you click that and it goes back to the grid view and you can also zoom in and make this a little bit bigger to see and read uh, if you want to to show fewer on the screen if you wanted to as well. And I like mine's at about 25%. I can see as much as I need to. I can make it smaller, uh, about 20. That's completely fine as well. It really depends on how big you want to make this this drawer. So I can drag it up and down, all right? And so you can always add new folders. Let's say you want to go into your computer, you want to add um, a new folder that has, um, I don't know, anything that you've got on your computer. So I've got downloads already on mine. i got desktop, I think, already on mine. So all of my folders are pretty much used, but you can pick a folder uh, that you want and you can add it in to here to be found without ever having to leave the program. You can search your computer by having that folder there. So what I recommend is that any images, videos, and things like that, put them all in the same folder or make one that's called pictures and videos. Uh, store them on your computer, save them there. Storm on a hard drive, whatever it is, and then go to new folder and make that be one of the searchable folders in Free Show for your media. And you can always change and have access to that uh, without having to go online. So I'm not going online to get this background. These are backgrounds that I've downloaded. They're saved on my computer and I can use them that way. Right. I've even got a lower thirds animation here if I wanted to. They can show up as a graphic that I downloaded off of Canva uh, that you can use as well. But that's a really cool setup when it comes to understanding shows and media. As we continue on, we'll talk more about the rest of the items in the drawer.